Well, thank you all for uh, joining us this afternoon at our roundtable. Uh, the topic of uh, this afternoon's conversation is employers. Your health plan may need immediate attention. I'm Dale Vlasic. I'm the, head, the chair of our employee benefits practice uh, group here at McDonald Hopkins. Uh, I am in the Cleveland office. To my immediate left is John Wirtshafter, who's also part of our employee benefits practice group, also in the Cleveland office. To my right is Tony Pilsner. Uh, also one of our members are, of our employee benefits practice group. Uh, she is in our Detroit office. And to my far right is Todd Sarver, who is stuck on a panel with a bunch of benefits lawyers, and he happens to be a labor lawyer. Uh, and Todd is part of our labor group and, and resides in our Columbus office. Um, what we plan to, to talk about this afternoon is obviously health care reform. I think everyone is aware that health care reform legislation has made significant changes in this nation and made significant changes in the way employers are going to be having to sponsor and provide, to the extent they want to, provide health coverage to their employees. Obviously, you think it's important because you've joined us here in our office here in Cleveland or you're joining us here on the webcast, and so this is something that is of interest to you. What we are not going to try and do uh, this afternoon is kind of rehash health care generally. We are going to focus uh, rather narrowly on what employers need to be doing. We're not going to talk about, other than very, very broad terms, about the benefits and mandates, but what it is that you need to be doing now, what you need to be worrying about in terms of your programs and your plans, and how you need to be operating in the next few months, few years. One of the things that that we need to be concerned about and need to be dealing with is the fact that health care has, health care reform, has mandated a lot of benefits that will need to be provided to all plans on all types of programs that employers are sponsoring, and some of which you've heard about. I'm just going to rattle them off to you relatively quickly, but just so you focus and put this in perspective. All plans are going to have to be eliminating annual and lifetime limits on benefits, although you can still have benefits, limits on certain medical procedures, but no annual or lifetime limits. You're not going to be able to have rescission on health insurance other than uh, for fraud or intentional misrepresentations. You're not going to be able to have pre-existing condition exclusion for children under 19. You are going to need to be providing uh, coverage for adult children up to age 26, unless they've got a other employer coverage and we'll talk about that. Uh, there's going to be uniform explanations of coverage and standardized benefits that are going to be applicable to plans. And there's various reporting potentially that you're going to have to be doing and maybe lowering premiums if your loss ratios aren't in certain limits. All plans are going to have to do that. But certain plans, and kind of the focus of what we're going to be talking about, certain plans may not have to provide that. And these are what are called grandfathered plans. Tony, what's a, what's a grandfathered plan? 